All right. Hey, good morning, New Beginnings Church. How y'all doing today? You doing good? Well, it's, it's, good, it's good to be back after a little vacation time. I've, I've really been dying to preach this message for the last two weeks when I prepared it, and I, I really can't wait to share with you what God has laid on my heart. So, hey, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. And uh, let's begin reading in verse 12. And today, I want to preach to you on this subject, the power of light. The power of light. And as I was worshiping those songs, as we talked about God being light and shining his light in our hearts and shining his light through us, I just, it just added fuel to the energy of the delivery of this sermon. And so I'm really excited about it. Y'all excited about it too? Let me hear you shout Amen. All right, you got it? Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And a lot of times when we think about that, we think about, well, we better do what God's telling us to do or he's going to come out and get us. So I got to fear him that way. But really, when you look at it in this context, it's talking about not really fearing what God will do to you, but you fear what your sin will do to God. That I, I fear how this will break his heart if I, if I do disobey his word. A different way to look at fear, isn't it, church? It says, for it is God. Who is it? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing. That, that's the most challenging part to me in verse 14. What about you, saints? That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, watch this, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may Rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would illuminate your word, that you would turn the lights on. And God, if there's any darkness in our life, if there's any darkness because of sin or because of circumstances, God, we pray that you will send your great light to us today and that we'd be forever changed. It's in Jesus' name that we ask and everybody said, amen. Amen. Hey, God has called us to do what? He's called us to shine as lights in the world, to be reflectors of his great light. The power of light is what I want to talk to you about today. I don't think a lot of people realize the magnitude of how powerful light really is. I think a lot of times when we think of the power of light, we go back and we look at the protons and the neutrons and the things that produce light. And many times we talk about the power of the stuff that produces the light and the power, but very rarely do we ever take the time to discuss the power that comes from light itself. I just got back from a cruise with my father-in-law and my wife and, and my mother-in-law, who my father-in-law was so generous to pay for. And any time somebody's going to pay for you to go on a cruise, you go on the cruise. Amen? Amen. If I said, hey, let's go on a cruise, New Beginnings... I got gotcha. you. Would you cruise with me? And so now, if you ever say, Pastor Kenny, you want to cruise with me? I'll cruise with you too. And so just keep that in mind. I don't think I'll ever be able to take everybody, but, or anybody for that matter. But you might be able to take me, I don't know. And I'll go if the Lord sends. But I realized on the first day, on that cruise ship that the power of light is real. Just being in the sun for about 30 minutes in the Caribbean lets you know how powerful light really is. The sun is so powerful because of the light that it produces. Listen, the sun is so powerful, you sit out in it long enough, it can kill you. It will literally burn your skin, amen, if you don't put on the proper sunscreen. I remember when Pastor Derek and I were out fishing a little while back ago. I wish he was, is he in here to hear this? That's okay. But his wife will tell him about it because she was just as upset with him as anybody. He's out there, and he's got his hat on backwards, and he's out there. You know, Derek, a little pale sometimes, you know. And so we're out there. We're out there, and uh, he didn't put the proper sunblock on. And 
For us to catch a fish, we got to be out there for all day long, you know. Got to just say, until we catch one, we're, gonna, we're not leaving. We might be out there for two days fishing. But so we, we get in the car, and he takes his hat off, and his face was blood red, and he had a white ring all the way around his forehead. Looked like he had a halo on his head. You know what I'm saying? And so the sun is powerful. I'm telling you, the sun teaches us the power of light. Light is powerful. Uh, light began with God. God is the one that sent light in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 2. Let me read that to you now. Popular passage of, of Scripture here. That This is amazing. It says, in the beginning, God. Anybody got any questions about that? In the beginning, God. You may think to yourself, well, who was before God? Who created? No, no, in the beginning was God. He is before all things. He, he is self-existent in himself. He has no beginning and no end. Now, that'll get you thinking for a second, won't it? Don't try to figure that out. It'll, it'll blow a cerebral circuit in your, in your mind. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And what, what was it? And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, like we sung this morning, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So one thing we learn that has been true since the very beginning of time is that when God sees d darkness, he sends light. When God sees darkness from the beginning of creation, when he sees darkness, if he's going to confront darkness, he always does it by sending his light. When there is darkness, he sends light. And when he sent the light, it dispelled all darkness. It divided the light from the darkness, and he saw that the light was good. Here's what we learn about light. It's absolutely impossible for darkness to overcome light. There's no way, there's no way, it just cannot happen. No matter how dark the night may seem, when light shows up, darkness flees. So what does God do when he sees darkness? He sends light throughout all of history since the very beginning of time. That's how he deals with it. We see God doing it in chapter 1 of Genesis. When there was a physical darkness, what does he do? He confronts it by sending physical light. Now fast forward to John chapter 1 verse 1. And we see God sending a different type of light. Not a physical light, but a spiritual light. Watch this. It says, in the beginning. <laughs> John 1.1 1, 1 starts out like Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God wasn't alone. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. Jesus. All things, watch this, watch the supremacy of our Savior. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. As we sit here and we talk about how fascinating light is, and we talk about the complexity of it, as we study it, we're just going to sit here, and we're going to be amazed by it. But don't be amazed by the light more than you are amazed by the maker of the light. The reason why this light's so cool and the reason why it gets us so excited when we sing about it isn't because light is so great, but it's because of the one who made the light with the voice of his mouth that makes it so great. It says in verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus was life, and the life was light. So when darkness covered the earth, in Genesis chapter 1, what did God do? God sent his physical light. When darkness covered the souls of humanity, in John chapter 1 verse 1, what did God do? God sent his light. Because when he sees darkness, and when he deals with darkness, he sends light to destroy it. So when God sent his son, the light of the world, into the world, it changed the world as we know it. It brought life to people that were dead. Because light always brings life, and darkness always brings death. 
Jesus is life. He is light. There's power in light. When God confronts darkness today in your marriage, in your life, in your community, in your neighborhood, at your job, how does he do it? He sends light. When I began to study the power of light, I I felt like this big (laughs) when I began to study it because it's so complex scientifically and there's so much to be said about the power of light and you can be overwhelmed by all of the things that come with it scientifically and today you know we have this modern science and we have all this stuff that's discovering the things that have been there all along and so what's amazing about it is you know we got these sol- we got these solar panels now and and because of the power of light the power that the sun gives you can put up a panel beside your house and wire it to your house and because of the power of light you can run your entire house electricity through a solar panel because of the light that's hitting it so they say it's more cost efficient there's all these different things that we're trying to use power sustain power with more efficiency light is powerful in that way but what is most intriguing to me about the power of light is the speed of light And I got to thinking about the speed of light, and I got to studying, and I got to doing a little bit of research about it. And and light is everywhere. There are particles of light all around us that we can't even see because they're so small. But the speed of light is absolutely fascinating. I learned that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Woo! That's fast, y'all. 186,000 miles per second. Now, to put that in perspective and to make it a little bit more relatable so that we can understand how fast that really is, is that if you're traveling at a rate of 186,000 miles per second, you can travel around the world seven times in one second. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? And so light is powerful because of its speed. And when you look at the particles of light, They are so small that you can't even see them. And in quantum physics, they call a particle of light a quantum. And we're getting into something that I know very little bit about, and I had to study a lot of it to be able to communicate it to you today. So don't think I'm like this scientific whiz. I was a high school dropout, okay? I graduated college by the grace of God. And so I never took physics. I never took chemistry. I didn't make it that far. But thank God for Google, amen? So you got a particle of light. It's a quantum. And so... The quantum travels, the reason it's so small, but it's powerful because it travels at 186,000 miles per second. Now, I want you to think of this quantum as a train. I want us to see the power of light today. This quantum is a train. Now, say this train travels 15 minutes one way, and it travels 15 minutes another way. How long has the the train traveled? 30 minutes. Not a trick question. You're like, uh, 15 Plus 15 is 30, right? All right, y'all help. It's 15 plus 15, 30. Some of y'all are like, I don't know. I want to debate that. You'll argue with a brick wall too, won't you? Husbands don't say amen. (laughs) Get you in trust. She's pointing at her husband. You know. Now I want us to go inside this quantum train. And what I want us to do, we're going to travel 15 15 minutes one way, but we're going to be traveling at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. And so we travel 15 miles at 186,000 miles per second. We travel for 15 minutes, okay? Not miles, 15 minutes. And we come back for 15 minutes. Now, how far have we traveled? Inside the train, it's been 30 minutes. But outside the train, the time that has elapsed because of the rate of speed that we are traveling, we have now entered into a new dimension of time. And the time that has elapsed outside the train has been 30 years. Don't try to figure that out today. And you can fact check me later on if you want because you're like, that ain't right, that ain't right. There ain't no way. A little fairly intelligent man named Albert Einstein came up with the theory of relativity, which is E equals MC squared. But you've got to have the speed of light for it to work. 186,000 miles per second. That is 
fast beyond what we can comprehend that on the inside of the train time is still but on the outside of the train time is moving we've entered into a new dimension of time because light travels faster than we could ever possibly imagine and so you're thinking like what is he talking about time travel today can we travel back in time well we could not because we are not dense enough to travel at 186,000 miles per second we would be consumed just would not happen but what I'm trying to talk to you about today is the power of light. And that's fascinating when we talk about the speed of light and we talk about the theory of relativity. And what's interesting about it is, is that we know that God is a God who is outside of time. That he does not exist in the dimension of time that we exist in because he is light. So much so where Peter said that one day to us is like a thousand years one day to the Lord is like a thousand years to us because he is light and he is outside of time. Are y'all tracking with me today? Maybe you're starting to see the power of light. It's fascinating. You know what I've realized? People are attracted to light. People are fascinated by light. People are attracted to it. And so here we are now. Light changes things. Light makes such a huge difference. Without light, all of us would be dead. Nothing can live in perpetual darkness. So here we are in our passage. We're talking about the power of light. We've been called to shine as what? Lights in the world. We're called to be reflectors of the light of God. God sent Jesus to be light in a dark world. And now Jesus has sent us to reflect his light in a dark world. Because what does he do when he confronts darkness? He sends light. As Christians, we're called to be light. We're called to be different. Let me ask you a question, penetrating here. Do you blend in with the dark or do you shine in the dark? Think about it. Do you just go with the flow of culture? Are you shining as a light in a dark world or have you become such a lover of darkness when you show up in a dark place, nothing changes? It's just darkness. Are you shining for Jesus? Because we cannot make a difference if we're not shining in the dark. Lights are beautiful in the dark, aren't they? We can't have impact. We can't be influential if we don't shine and reflect the light and the glory of God. Because what does light do? It dispels darkness. Are y'all tracking with me this morning? And so, here's what light does. Darkness is the absence of light. And so, if you want to be a light, if you want to be who God has called you to be, this is what will happen. You will go into an environment that is dark, and you will change the environment. You will no longer be impacted or influenced by the environment around you, but you'll actually be able to go into a dark place, and you'll be able to change the environment around you. You'll change the temperature of the room because of the glory of God that's shining through you. Do you want to be that light? I want to be that light. I'm telling you, we need more lights to shine in the dark. As this world gets darker, as things get more difficult and more sinful and more wicked, God help us as the church of the living God to stand up and shine brighter than we've ever shined before. Y'all going to help me preach this morning? Or y'all just going to let me shout and you just, yeah, give me something. Preach, make it plain, come on, bring it, any of those things. You know, because you're like, I don't do that though. But once you try it one time, you'll say, oh, I kind of felt good. I kind of felt good. Then, then you won't just say preach. You'll say, all right, make it plain, make it hot, give it right, keep it going. You'll get to saying all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> so if we're going to be light, I believe there's three things that we need to remember in this passage that the Apostle Paul gives us. Three things that we need to remember and three things that we need to apply if we're going to be light. So are you all ready for number one? Shout amen at me if you're ready for number one. Amen. Number, there we go. Now we're cooking. Number one, if I'm going to be light, I have to realize that it's intimacy before act, 
activity. Intimacy with God before activity for God. Isn't that what Paul's talking about in verse 12? He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work within you. It is God who works in you. So as I was studying this, this is what I wrote down for me personally. My public, y'all, y'all ready? Yeah, you know, nobody want to take notes to get your phone out and tap in your phone like that, tweet it or anything like that, or Facebook it. But, but here it is. My public ministry is only as strong as my private intimacy. The only way that I can preach with fire and passion and influence and impact on a Sunday morning is because upon awakening, I got down on my knees and I cried out to God and begged him to use me Sunday morning at New Beginnings Church. And it's not just a Sunday morning ritual, but it's a Monday ritual. It's a Tuesday, it's a Wednesday, it's a Thursday, it's a Friday. Because I will need the private intimacy if I'm going to be any use to anybody in public ministry. Am I preaching this morning? Paul says, if you want to shine as lights in a dark world, you've got to realize you can't work out what God has yet to work in. I don't want to preach if nobody gives me anything. Work out your own salvation, but I can't work it out if God hasn't worked it in. You see, a lot of people are very, let me get down here a little bit closer to you so maybe you can wake up. See, 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 this is, this is how it is. It would be something, a lot of people are very active for God and they're serving God and they're doing all these things for God. And in the church, and many times even in the leadership, we will say, man, you're doing so much, you're doing such a great job. And you're like, well, man, this is getting everybody's approval, so you keep on doing it. But before you know it, you burn out and you fall flat on your face. And now you're not doing anything. And the reason why is because you had a lot of activity for God and you were doing great at that. But the power that fuels your activity comes from a private intimacy. And you failed, and you went around, you didn't fail, you went around the very thing that's going to fuel the light that burns in your soul. And the longer I go without the intimacy, the longer I go without reading his word, and the longer I go without praying to him, is, is the more my light will dim and fade. And before I know it, I'm burned out while God's called me to burn bright. The same is also true. Man, I pray every day, I get in his word every day, but I ain't served in five years. You have not created an outlet or a conduit for God's power that is at work within you to flow through you. And so God says, don't just sit around and let me work it in and you never work it out through serving and getting active. But also, don't get active and work out and never get with me so I can put more power in you. And so it's the ins and outs of the Christian faith. It starts with God working in us. That's true for anything in life, by the way. One of the things that God has challenged me greatly over the last, I would say, three months in ministry as a pastor is that I can't expect more out of you than what I'm willing to put in you. Lord, have birth. let me come back down here again and let me preach it and let me make it a little plain to you. As leaders, you cannot get mad at the people that you lead for not working out what you failed to put in. And so... It would be a bad thing if we never did a serve team training. It would be a bad thing if we never did a heart and soul. It would be a bad thing if we didn't do summer nights. It would be a bad thing if we didn't do those things because every time that we do a training and every time that we do something, we're invest, we're putting something in you. We're depositing something in you so that you can work it out. And you can't get mad at the people that you lead for not working out what you haven't even been willing to put in because whatever you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. You know what I found? That's not just true for leadership, but that's true for marriage. Woo! You want your marriage to be on fire, hot and heavy and passionate. But you don't want to put in the romance that take whatever you put into it's what you're going to get out of it. You want your kids to grow up and be a man and a woman of God, but God help you if you don't want to get up with them or sit down with them in the evening and invest in them and impart in them the principles and the, and, and the, proceed, and the things that God wants to do through his word in their lives. If I want my kids to grow up and be men and women of God, then I've got to be willing to put that into them while they're little now. That's true for your, whatever, whatever you're putting into it 
is what you're going to get out of it. If you don't like what you're getting out of it, you need to start changing what you're putting into it. It's the ins and outs, ins and outs. Touch your neighbor and say it's the ins and outs. We see this all throughout Scripture. We see God working in people. We see him raising them up to work through them. We see it in the lives of people like Moses. We see it in the lives of people like David. We see it in the life of the Apostle Paul. You see, God, let me just say that. God has a special and unique purpose for each person in this room right now. He has a special purpose. He has a unique purpose. And your purpose is going to be different than the person sitting next to you's purpose. That's why Christ has told you to be an imitator of him and not somebody else. Because he can't use and bless who you pretend to be. He can only bless and, who, and use who he's created you to be in Christ Jesus. So you got to stop trying to be like everybody else and just be yourself and be who Christ has called you to be. And, and, here's, and here's why. You are most effective. You are most influential when you are you and who Christ has saved you to be. So we want to be imitators of him, work out our own salvation. We're called to work out our own faith because God can't use who you pretend to be. God works in us to work through us. Whatever God is doing in your life right now, no matter where you are in life, you may say, you know what, I don't like where I am in life right now. I don't like where I'm at in my marriage. I don't like where I'm at in my career. I don't like, you, you don't need to complain about it. You don't need to be negative about it because God is preparing you right now for something greater that he's gonna give you in the future. And if you miss out on the mundane, you're gonna miss out on the miraculous later on. Am I preaching to somebody in this room that if I'm not where I feel like God has called me to be at yet, then he must be doing some greater things within me because he's getting me ready to do some greater things with with it went through me in the future. But he's got to do it in you first. So I'm not going to be here forever. But while I'm here, I'm going to get everything out of the season that God has me in so I will be prepared for the season that I will be in. Are y'all tracking with me this morning? That's why when I was saved June 11, 2005, in a jail cell, the first time God called me, he called me to preach, and I started preaching. I preached to three people that night, and I preached with the same fire and the same passion with the three people, which turned into the 30 people in the cell block as I preached to the over 100 people in this room today because it was what he did in my heart back in the jail cell that has made me so effective today in this church today because I got it. You got to get, you got to get, you got to get what he's putting in you so you can work it out later on. And so you got to get with him. You got to get alone with him. So my obedience to God, and if you look at the life of Moses, God worked in Moses for 40 years before he worked through Moses to deliver the people of Israel. He was tending sheep for 40 years. Do you imagine coming on church staff? You cleaned the bathrooms for 40 years. Think about it. Moses tended sheep for 40 years, but he got everything out of the season that he was in so that God could launch him into the destiny that he had created him for later on. So my obedience to God, my service to God, my calling should never come from pressure on the outside, but from power on the inside. So many people come to church, and they come to church for the wrong reasons even sometimes, you know? They come to church not to have God put something in their heart or for them to have an encounter with God where God speaks to them and they are transformed by it and they are changed by it, but they come to keep up with appearances or they come to check off a list and all these different things that we can do in, 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 in the mind or the mentality of religion. And they do things many times to please people instead of pleasing God. And, and sometimes we do that because we are so addicted to the approval of others. And so I never want to make anybody mad. I never want to say anything that, that might cause somebody to have a dim image of the greatness of who I am. And you think that you're doing a good thing because everybody loves you and likes you. Jesus said this world will hate you. Everybody's loving you and patting you on the back and, oh, just kissing your feet. You're probably not living for Christ. You're living for them. Woo! I'll preach in this church if y'all let me this morning. So how do I receive God's power in my life? 
comes through intimacy. What is intimacy? It's reading God's word daily. The times that I've slipped away from God and the times that I was furthest from God in the 12 years of my relationship is because I failed to read his word and pray daily. Affairs, addictions, bondages, you think they just come up and start out of nowhere, out of a flash. But they really start with something as small as getting out of God's word and getting out of a daily devotional life with God. That's the way I receive God's power in my life. I can't shine it if there's no power. I think it's interesting this phrase that God works in us. It comes from the Greek word ernageo, which is where our English word energy is derived from. And so what it is when God works his power in your life, it's God's divine energy at work in us and through us that enables us to shine for his glory. And so as we talk about the power of light, I've got a lot of shouting to do with this voice leaving like it is already. Some of y'all said, well, just tone it down a little bit, preacher. I can't. 12-year anniversary of giving my life to Christ. I'm excited. I'm wound up tighter than a set of scales on a snake. I know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> just pray for my voice. So as we're talking about this power you know, I'm talking about light, trying to communicate how powerful it is so that you can see the power that is within you as a follower of Christ. But if that doesn't communicate what's available to you, let me say it this way. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the power that lives within you, and it's the power and the energy of God that is sustaining you through life's trials and battles. And so what I want to do, I want to take a second to encourage you, if you're weary and well-doing, that God wants to work his power in your life. You don't have to quit. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. Listen, if your light is growing dim, if your fire is beginning to fade, this is what I pray, that today you would get in the presence of God, that you would cry out to God, and that you would hear his word, that it wouldn't just be preached in word only, but it would be preached in the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, and that God imparts something in you that fans the flame that maybe is beginning to fade, that you'll leave this church today on fire shining bright, for the glory of God. Do you believe it can happen, church? Give them a shout of praise. That God can do something in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. When you work out what God has worked in, you become an unstoppable force for the kingdom of God. You gotta burn bright. Don't burn out. How do you burn out? By doing activity without int intimacy. Activity is short-lived. Serving is short-lived without an intimate, devotional walk with Christ. Number two, what do you got to have? Number two, you got to have positivity over negativity. Paul said, do all things without complaining and grumbling. We got to learn to stop speaking so negative about everything. So here's the context. As I work out what God has worked in, I do it out of delight, not out of duty. If I'm going to complain about my service to God, then I shouldn't even be doing it. And what's interesting about this is, is Paul is writing to them about complaining and telling them not to do it, and he's doing it from a prison. You know what he's saying? If anybody's got the right to complain about where they are right now in their life, it's me. I'm sitting in a prison because I was helping people. I'm sitting in a prison because I was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if I can be content and do what God has called me to do in this prison, in my chains, then how much more should you be able to do what God's called you to do without complaining? There's a verse in Proverbs that talks about in the power of the tongue is the power of life and death are in the tongue. The power of life and death are in the tongue. If you want to be a light, you've got to stop complaining about everything. My marriage is dark right now. Well, stop complaining to your spouse. My job is dark right now. Well, stop complaining to your coworkers. My family is dark. It's damaged right now. Well, stop speaking death over your family and your marriage and your life. Because what does light do? Light brings life, 
and darkness brings death. Are you speaking life or are you speaking death over your dreams, your ministry, your family, your marriages, your church? Because if not, you're damaging what God has given you. Number three, trying to move quick today. We have to realize it's about focusing on the word, not the world. Focusing on the word, not the world. God has called us to shine in the world, that we are to be in the world, but we're not to be of the world, right? That we're going to be in darkness, but we're not going to become darkness, We're going to penetrate it with the light of God that is within us. And so the reality is that we live in a fallen world, don't we? We live in a dark world, wickedness. We live in a world with a culture and society that has everything backwards. We're calling what is wrong, right. What is right is wrong. But we cannot judge the world for their perception because they have a perception that is a result of darkness. And you can't see what's wrong and what's right when you're in the dark. So quit, bl- quit, quit smacking people over the head with your Bible for stumbling when they don't have a light. Y'all got that for a second. It takes, it takes a little bit sometimes. I know. So here, here, here's the thing. We want to give that light to the people that are in darkness. And, and here's another thing. Now, if you're a Christian, you've got the light, so you ain't got no excuse to be acting crazy. Are you all right this morning? The church should be the light of the world, not the darkness of the world. We, we've, there should be a difference. Are you all with me this morning? But if we are walking in darkness, we have no impact. We make no difference. So let me ask you again. I'm going to ask Daniel if he can help me close. Are you blending in? with the dark or are you shining in the dark and there's been times where I've blended in with the dark so well can I be real there's been times when I've been a chameleon and my colors of my skin would change with the environment around me and I could blend in with anything but God hasn't called us to be chameleon Christians God hasn't called us to be darkness he's called us to be light because what does God do when he sees darkness he sends light but how can I be light I've got to get with God in the morning I've got to get with God daily I've got to pray to him I got to talk to him I got to be committed to him I got to obey him I can't shine if I'm disobedient with my life with my time with my finances I can't listen I can't shine if I'm being disobedient as Pastor George preached last week you've got to how do you shine you're obedient You're relying on the power of God. We've got to cling to the word. We've got to live it and we've got to share it. It don't do me no good if I can preach loud and I can preach passionate and I can share the gospel everywhere I go if I'm not living it in my marriage, if I'm not living it in my life. Same is also true. It doesn't do you any good if you're living it, but you never speak it and you never share it got it the two are the perfect ingredients for a dynamite powerful life it's how you shine so to reflect the light of God what do I gotta do I've got to reflect the character of God through obedience I lose light I grow dim I fade when I say no God I'm not doing that you're not ha- I'm not going to give my I'm not going to trust I'll trust you with my salvation and my hev- and heaven and eternity but I won't trust you with my wallet God I'll, I'll trust you and all these other but God when it comes to that one thing that I can't see and we all, we all know what that one thing is you don't know my I don't know but you, we all have a thing the world is dark and we're called to shine bright. So as the darker the world gets, turn the news on if you don't think it's a dark world. As things get darker, may we shine even brighter in the darkness. 
as you go into work this Monday, as you go into wherever God has placed you this Monday, your corner of the world that may be so dark that it's uncomfortable at times. Shine bright for the glory of God. Love like Jesus loves. Live like Jesus lived. Shine. Bring light. No matter how dark the night may seem, and I just want to say, no matter how dark your marriage is, no matter how dark your career seems, no matter how dark your stage of life seems, I believe God's going to send light to that situation today. Do you believe it, church? I believe that if we ask him, he'll he'll do it. He can send light. He can send light that will penetrate any darkness in your life. Because what does he do when he sees darkness? Genesis 1-1, he sent light. John chapter 1-1, he sent light. And it dispels the darkness. It brings light to a dark place. That's why New Beginnings Church exists, by the way. Because there's darkness in our community. And I know nobody, oh man, I live in the best community in the world. No, you don't. I can't say there's no darkness when somebody overdosed on heroin last week. I can't say there's no darkness when I saw another marriage destroyed last week. I, I, can't, I can't say there's no darkness when I see Christians living beneath the abundant life that God has called them to live. There's so much more. And so, over five years ago, God saw darkness. What did he do? He sent New Beginnings Church. Some marriages, brought some light to some marriages, brought some light to some bondages, brought some light to some impossible circumstances. Addiction ran rapid, so what did God do? He sent Celebrate Recovery to New Beginnings Church. We're seeing people like Doug, we're seeing people like Steve, we're seeing people set free every single week. People that would still be in darkness unless God sent a light. So maybe there's some darkness in your area of the world and God's wanting to send a light but he can't find anybody to send it through. And so I wondered if you would say today, you know what? There's darkness everywhere I go. And you know what? Maybe I haven't been shining like I should. Do you know that the God of heaven is looking down the towers of heaven today and he's saying, I want to shine light in that community. I want to shine light in that workplace. I want to shine light in that family. I want to shine light in that marriage. But I don't have anybody that's willing to say, shine through me. Will you be that person, church? Will you say, God, use me? Use me, God. If that's you, give God a shout of praise. I want God to shine through me. I want God to use me. If he won't use anybody else, I'll say, God, use me. Shine through me. Darkness is tricky. I remember over 2,000 years ago, darkness thought it had won. Thought that darkness had defeated light once and for all. There was a battle between light and the darkness outside the city gates of Jerusalem on the hill of Golgotha that we call Calvary. And as Jesus hung on the cross, he who knew no darkness became darkness that we might become light. He who knew no sin became sin for you and for me, that we might become the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as he's hanging on the cross, becoming sin, battling darkness, the Bible says that the sky grew dim. And when he breathed his last breath, when he committed his spirit, The Bible says that the earth shook and the rocks quaked and the sky went dark. And for three days, three days, you know, it was amazing. I gave my life to Christ in solitary confinement in jail cell 12 years ago. And you know how long I was in that holding cell by myself? Three days. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And I'm telling you, I don't care how dark your life is. 
I don't care how dark your situation is. I don't care the condition of your situation or your circumstance. This is what I know. Third day is gone its way if you'll hang in there. If you'll cling to God, if you'll just have faith, He's going to send His light because when He sees darkness, He sends light. And so on the third day, when the physical sun was rising and God was given physical light to dispel the physical darkness, on that same Sunday morning, the Son of God rose and gave spiritual light. Ever since he rose from the grave, ever since that tomb's been empty, spiritual light, everlasting light, everlasting life has been available. Have you experienced it in your life, I wonder? You can't put out something that God hasn't put in. You can't shine until Christ puts his light within your soul when you place your faith in him. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here and you want to experience this glorious light, today would be the glorious day for you where you run out of that grave. I did it 12 years ago. Today can be your day. June 11, 2017. Where you put the past behind you and the cross before you. If that's you and God's calling you and He's speaking to you right now, and you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to pray with me now. You can pray silently as I pray out loud. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I know that my sin separates me from you. Today I ask that you would forgive me of my sin. I believe that your son Jesus died for my sin on the cross. I believe that he rose victorious on the third day. Today I turn from the way that I've been living, and I turn to you. God, I ask that you would change my life from the inside out. That you would use me to change the world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you just prayed with me as I prayed out loud, I'm not going to ask you to come front. I'm not going to do anything that might embarrass you or anything like that. But I want to celebrate with you. I want you to fill out a connection card and indicate that you prayed to receive Christ today. But just as a show of hands, if you just prayed when I prayed, you shoot your hand up high. Just shoot it up real high right now. Just shoot it up high. I prayed when you prayed. I see hands here to my right. I see a hand here. I see a hand here in the center. I see a hand here to my left. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? I just prayed. I prayed silently when you prayed out loud. God just did a work in my heart. I'm so excited for you. I'm so proud. If you could, please grab that Green New Beginnings Connection card. They're in the seat flap in front of you. They're at the Connections guest services table. And if you could fill that out and drop it in the offering plate here in a few moments, we want to get you plugged in. And we want to rejoice with you. We want to see you grow in your faith, become a passionate follower of Christ. Y'all can lift your heads. Hey, let's give God some praise for what he's done in this place today.